Hey guys and welcome to episode 2 of this Kerbal Space Program Let's Play. Uh, last episode we attempted to go to the moon but we failed uh, when we was trying to get hooked by the moon's gravity. Uh, for some reason our, our pod here which was going to get us from Kerbin to the moon didn't it didn't get caught by the moon's gravity for some reason. Um, I have a few um, uh, reasons why I think it happened. The first reason is that we used more fuel than we was meant to. But uh, so, so we didn't uh, have the speed that we should have had, and things like that. So, but yeah, we're going to attempt it again today. Hopefully, it's going to be more successful. So, uh, yeah, let's launch the rocket. Put our SAS on. Um, I thought I'd speak about some of the things that are going to be coming out in uh, the next Kerbal Space Program update, which is going to be 0 0.17. And there's going to be internal cockpit views, so instead of always looking outside the aircraft like this, we're going to be able to see see the perspective uh, from the cockpit. And there's going to be training scenarios teaching you how to construct aircraft better and uh, or things like orbit, orbital, orbit, orbital maneuvers. <laughs> Still done that a bit. Um, there's going to be visual cues to tell us where the centre of mass is and also things like thrust and lift. I'm not quite sure how they're going to... Oh, drove in a bit. Let's move like this 90 degree line a bit. I'm not quite sure how they're going to implement that. I, I, I'm assuming there's going to be like uh, visual cues or animations. So we'll see how they do that. Uh, the game's going to come with pre-built planes and rockets. Um, the main reason they're doing that is to give you something to play with straight away before you learn the tools and to hopefully give you some inspiration to the aircraft you can design. Uh, there's going to be some new parts but they haven't specified what new parts it's going to be but I imagine some new fuel tanks, some some new rockets, some things like that. Maybe different size uh, cockpits and rockets and definitely solid rocket boosters. I think with the vanilla parts there's only one solid rocket booster and it's teeny, teeny tiny. So that's what she said. Um, there's going to be some bug fixes as well. Uh, the main ones is going to they're going to make the the atmosphere around Kerbin uh, look better, and they're going to uh, improve the fuel flow system. So there can be some bugs uh, with regards to the fuel flow system, like uh, having tank strain which you don't want to drain, things like that. So hopefully they're going to be fixed in the next update, and also some miscellaneous things such as uh, changing part titles and descriptions. Um, if you want to read more about it, there's going to be links to uh, the forum post that they made and the wiki page in the description about all the plan changes and things that they've got in development. So we're at 20,000 meters now. The speed's pretty nice. What's that apple apsis at? 30,000 meters. So we're in the medium density part of the atmosphere now, so hopefully we will start to speed up a bit quicker now we're in the thinner atmosphere. Apoapsis will get high. I'm going to try and aim for a higher apoapsis than we did last time. I think last time it was about 120,000 meters. I'm going to try and go for a, between 160 and 170 this time. And when we do our orbital burn around Kerbin, I'm going to do it before it get to the apoapsis, so we're not trying to get our, our orbit once we've gone past the apoapsis because that's quite because that makes it less efficient. So we want to be as efficient as possible to conserve as much fuel. Talking a few of these tanks are nearly done. Alright, let's keep an eye on that apoapsis here and cut the engines when we're at about 165,000 meters. Okay, that'll do. So, what we can do now is we can separate this stage because the the fuel that's left in it isn't really worth using, so we'll separate that stage and engage these engines and just get away from that from that stage there, so we don't hit into it and kill those engines. So I want to I want to try and start our orbital burn around here in our arch. So we're gonna try and steady this, put the RCS on and our engines for the thrust vectoring like I said last time because it gives us added maneuverability try and stop spinning here 
and go along that 90 degree line. And we'll try and stop it around there. Get as close to the horizontal line as we can. Okay, and we'll engage SAS uh, and turn our RCS off. So we're about where I want to be in our arch, so we're going to do a burn now to try and get into orbit. And hopefully we're not burning past our apoapsis because if we, as we do it, because if we do our burn as we're coming up to our apoapsis, we're going to get in a more even orbit around Kerbin. Instead of last time, the apoapsis was about 200,000 meters, I think, and then our periapsis was about 90,000 90, meters. And that's only barely just out of the atmosphere. And if we get into the atmosphere, we're going to get drag from from the air and that'll slow us down. We don't want that. I think this is the coolest looking stage of the rocket. If you look at the nozzles there you can see the thrust vector in keeping it on track. Try and get a bit more on this on this horizontal line here so we can be a bit more efficient. Hold it there. Um, in the last video as well, I noticed I was calling this planet Moomin. It's called Minmus. I don't know why I was calling it Moomin. But if we successfully get to the moon, I think that's going to be our, ne our next objective. And I'm going to film me uh, creating the rocket as well and testing it. Instead of doing all that off camera. Because the reason I did it off camera is so we can we, we could get to the moon without a hitch pretty, pretty easily. But that still never happened. We still messed up. And as you can see, there's debris from our last one. At least I think it's from that one. I'm not sure. From our last failed mission. But we're going to be getting to orbit here soon. We've gone past our apoapsis, but only by a little bit, so it's not too bad. Last time we was a lock here, past our apoapsis. So that's at 181,000 meters. So you want a periapsis about that too. Okay, that'll do. So 285 and 162 when we get to our apoapsis, I'll do a burn to make this more even. So I'm going to speed up until we come back around to our apoapsis and then I'll film me, uh, show, you, show you me doing the burn. Okay, so we're just about to get to our apoapsis, and uh, let's get our rocket facing in the right position. Okay, then slow our, slow our movement down, so we can get in that circle, overshot it a bit. Put our throttle up a bit so we have a greater influence from the thrust vector in. So we put our SAS on, hold it there, turn our RCS off so we don't waste all that fuel. Okay. 278360, that seems close enough. So, when we see the moon appear on the orbit, we're going to do our burn again. So, our orbit collides with this orbit, and we can rendezvous with the moon. And uh, hopefully, this time you'll get to see the animation which shows that we're going to get pulled by the moon's gravity. And then we get to. Then you get to watch me fail, probably, as I try and get into a somewhat circular orbit around the moon. So I'll speed through this and I'll see you then. Okay, so we're back. We are nearly an hour into our mission timer. And in not so long the moon's gonna be coming up on our horizon. 
so we shall angle ourselves in the right direction so we can do our burn. See the RCS nozzles there. The SAS on, hold it there. Okay, so now we just gotta wait for the moon. So there's the moon and there's the horizon, so hopefully it's not gonna take too long. Okay, so there's the moon. We will start our burn. Try and get back on that horizontal line. Put the SAS on. So that fuel like All right I'm out. Last time when we did this we ran out of fuel in this stage. Hopefully we won't this time. We may do actually, but that's okay. Okay, so we've run out of fuel, so we'll separate this now. Try and get back into our position. A bit tricky. Start our burn again. And hopefully, we get grabbed by the moon this time. Yep, there we go. So let's do a bit more. Okay. I don't know why it's freaking out here, it shouldn't be. Um, maybe we should burn a bit more, see if that stops happening. Okay, well it's flickering for some reason, it doesn't usually. It just usually shows this bit here where we're gonna have our moon encounter. So I'm gonna fast forward through this bit and I'll come back when we're here. Okay, so we're about to have our moon encounter. So there's Kerbin and where's the moon? There it is. So I'm not quite sure how we should do this because usually that's that's a solid line instead of this weird flickering thing. So I think we should just kind of aim to the left of the moon because the moon is going to be around here. So if we aim to the left of the moon, hopefully that will make this curve around a bit. Not quite sure, but we'll give it a go. <clears throat> Let's just see what happens, wait until we get this moon encounter thing, wait until we get there. Let's see what happens, see if our trajectory does change to a weird orbit around the moon. Because we have to get to a point where the moon's gravitational influence is bigger than Kerbin's. Probably doesn't help that we're above, that we're quite aware above this this plane that the moon's on. Okay, so we're just about to hit this encounter point. <laughs> 